Hello, what's up? It is really great to be back after a two week hiatus. And uh, you know what? I wanted to uh, thank each and every one of you for uh, getting for, uh, t for all the texts and all the messages um, I have been receiving from each and every one of you. Um, I was uh, under the weather. Um, like I said, um, it's been a crazy October for me, as much as been a crazy October uh, for some of you who have been sick and under the weather. Um, unfortunately for me, I was one, but um, hey, these past two weeks I've been through, God's been so good to me. He healed me, and now I am back full force. And now I am gonna be bringing to you a brand new series of messages, Ow. <laughs> which is entitled, God is patient. And here's why. The attribute of God's patience is evident in both the Old and New Testament. One example comes from God himself, who proclaimed to Moses, the, and if you have your Bible or Bible app, please mark Exodus 34, 6, says, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. The phrase slow to anger illustrates his patience. The psalmist also praised God as a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, like I said, abounding in love and faithfulness. <coughs> Psalm 86, 15. Now, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul describes God as a kind, forbearing, and patient God. Romans 2.4. The Apostle Peter also referred to God's patience when addressing, God's, when, when addressing objections from scoffers, then extending to now regarding the second coming, and it's in 2 Peter 3.9 saying, the law is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. There are just a few instances of God being described as a patient. As patient. Now, when scripture describes God as being patient, it means that he endures humanity's flaws, does not easily get angry and holds back judgment to make room for repentance. His patience is also demonstrated in how he condescended to work through imperfect humans to carry out his plans. Noah, Abraham, Moses, King David, and the prophets are some examples. Additionally, we view God's patience towards humans right after the fall when God made clothing for his shame creations. Genesis 3, 21. He also patiently listened to Cain, even in the face of judgment. Genesis 4, 15. Then there is flood. Scripture describes the inhabitants of the world as being corrupt in God's sight and full of violence. Genesis 6, 11. Even with, the moral, even with the moral depravity of our day, you would be horrified at the violence of the world in that day. Yet God did not execute swift judgment. Instead, he waited till Noah built the ark, which took a long time, 1 Peter 3.20. In God's judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah, his patience was revealed when he promised Abraham he would not exercise judgment if there were at least 10 righteous people in the city, Genesis eighteen thirty-two, For context, Sodom and Gomorrah had not only sinned, but there was a great outcry against them, verse 20. Yet God was willing to show mercy to all of them for the sake of only 10 people. Other instances of God's patience include his dealings with the Canaanites, Genesis 15, 16, the Ninevites in Jonah's day, Jonah 3, 10, and the Israelites before the exile, 2 Kings 17, 13, 14. His patience also explains the perceived delay in 
Jesus' second coming, Second Peter 30, 3, 9, and 15. All right. Perhaps the most exceptional display of God's patience is in the person of Jesus. The Son of God took on human flesh, lived among his creation, and endured challenges in his ministry. He also patiently succumbed to humiliation at the cross in order to accomplish his redemptive work for humanity. And finally, like all attributes of God, his patience surpasses ours. While this is good news for the struggling believer or those reaching out to an unbelieving loved one, it can also lead to frustration. Like the martyred saints in Revelation 6.10, believers may cry out, How long, Lord? How long will we remain in the broken world? How long to restoration? How long till we are free from the clutches of sin and suffering? How long do we endure? But even if our even in our perplexed state, we trust that God is absolutely in control and infinitely good. You see, it's very you see, God is very patient, he's kind, and he's always humble. And um, the more he does things um in with love uh, the more he would always try to become the more stable God. And it's always important. We always try to be try to humble ourselves and be patient and follow with God. And that way we will remain steadfast in him the same way as we would be loyal to him. Thank you very much. You be blessed and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.